So how'd your fluorescent proteins come out? Did you get any glowing action? Now you're ready to analyze your results from the lab. Let's see how our proteins came out. To check if the fluorescent proteins fluoresced, they were held up to a UV light. If the protein fluoresces after being exposed to the light, then you purified your proteins by separating the fluorescent proteins from the bacterial proteins as thoroughly as possible. The more pure your result is, the brighter it should fluoresce. If your results did not glow, it is possible that there may still be a lot of extra bacteria molecules in your tube. However, it may also depend on which color you choose to produce because it is harder to see results with certain colors as opposed to others. The main objective of this lab is to purify proteins from the already transformed bacteria, meaning the bacteria that has already taken up the DNA code, the code for producing fluorescent proteins. Next, we wanted to break open the bacteria cells to let out the fluorescent proteins inside. That's where the lysozymes and dry ice comes in. A lysozyme is a kind of enzyme that breaks down the bacteria. After freezing it in a snap freeze for 10 minutes, or placing it in the freezer overnight, all the cells are cracked open, so the fluorescent proteins can be released. This happens because the water inside the cells expand when frozen, causing the cells to burst open. The tube is defrosted and placed in the centrifuge. What happens after the tube goes for a spin in the centrifuge is that the properties of the tube separate. The bacteria cell fragments are denser than the proteins. Afterward, a pellet develops at the bottom of the tube, all the bacteria, and a liquid called the supernatin remains on top. This consists of fluorescent proteins and other proteins still suspend on the liquid. The supernatin is pipetted out and mixed with nickel beads in preparation for the chromatography. A chromatography is a way to separate the different properties from the solution. The fluorescent proteins are specially engineered to have a tail called histidine and naturally hook onto the nickel beads like a magnet. When the supernatant and nickel beads are put through chromatography, the nickel beads are too big to pass through the cotton, which means that all the fluorescent proteins don't go through either. So all the other proteins that we don't want flow through. Now during chromatography, most of the fluorescent proteins are still stuck to the nickel beads in the cotton. And when we need a way to get them out, we pour the elution buffer onto the nickel bead column. The elution buffer has a special kind of molecule in it called imidazole, which has a structure very similar to a histidine. So the imidazole kicks histidine out of the way and takes a spot, therefore allowing the fluorescent protein to fall through leaving you pure fluorescent protein. One of the main focuses of this lab is to understand how to use bacteria and their ability to multiply rapidly. This same process is not used just for fluorescent protein, but for pretty much any protein. Scientists do protein purification for the commercial production of medicine. Those that are diabetic are treated by insulin, which is a purified protein product. Purification is critical, especially with insulin. Insulin needs to be injected with a syringe, so if there's bacteria molecules in the end product, the user will get sick. So, overall, you learned how to do the process of chromatography and how to purify proteins, such as fluorescent protein and insulin. I hope you walk away today with a better understanding for the wonders of biology and protein purification.